Armor and weapon mods are some of the most important parts of any build in Destiny 2. Some mods are easy to get, and some make you go out of your way, so that's why I've compiled a list of every mod and how you can get every mod as a solo player. If we're meeting for the first time, I'm Marshix and I make Destiny 2 guides for solo players. If you find this guide helpful, a like would be very much appreciated. You start the game with quite a few mods already. You don't have to do anything for these. As soon as you get a piece of armor that can take mods, you have access to all of them. Things like Focusing Strike, Arc, Solar, and Void Resist, minor stat mods, and even some combat style mods like Taking Charge, High Energy Fire, Global Reach, and everything else highlighted on the screen. For the sake of time, I won't go over what each mod does, but if you're curious for yourself, you can see them all in the mod section of collections. The next set of mods you can get come from Legendary Drops. These include Legendary Engrams, as well as Vendor Rank Up Packages. These include Concussive Dampener, the three cost stat mods, and the majority of mods with elemental affinities for any given piece of armor. Be sure to watch until the end for a good way of farming over 100 legendary engrams per hour. Ranking up the gunsmith can give you all of the ammo finders, targeting, loaders, dexterity, reserves, unflinching, scavengers, and the non-adept weapon mods. I believe the only exceptions to this are trace rifle armor mods which come from legendary drops. In addition to his rank ups, he also has mods for sale. Every day, he will have two random weapon mods available for 10 mod components. These rotate every day at reset, so be sure to check back every day for whatever mods you're looking for. A good way to get mod components quickly is by heading over to collections and finding a blue weapon that has a red legion symbol on it. Pull out as many as you can hold, then dismantle them. Each one has a 10% chance to give you mod components, and you get back two of the three gunsmith materials that you spend, so it's very cheap. If you don't feel like doing that, you can always farm endless amounts of gunsmith bounties. 801 also sells two random mods every day. One of the two will be an armor mod that goes into the second and third slots of armor, mostly things like ammo reserves or scavengers. The other mod will be a charge with light or war mine cell mod, with a few exceptions for similar mods introduced in later seasons. These include things like protective light, powerful friends, lucent blade, and everything else on screen. All of these are amazing, so be sure to check back every day so you don't miss the next time she sells anything you don't have. For the next set of combat style mods, check out the war table in the helm. As you rank up the war table through doing battlegrounds, you'll unlock some of the elemental well mods. There will be two of these available to buy for three mod components every week. These include font of might, font of wisdom, and elemental charge, armaments, light, and ordnance. These are some of the most basic elemental well mods, so I would highly recommend grabbing most of these if you plan on using elemental wells. While you're at the helm, check out the splicer servitor. Here you can get Reaping Wellmaker, Well of Tenacity, Explosive Wellmaker, Well of Life, Overcharge Wellmaker, Well of Ions, and Shield Crash Wellmaker. These are unlocked by ranking up the Splicer Servitor. You rank it up by gathering decrypted data. A quick way to farm decrypted data is by running the corrupted version of the expunged Tartarus mission and opening the final chest, assuming you have corrupted keys. You can even skip the majority of this mission by jumping through a hole in the second wall. If you do this, none of the enemies or barriers will stop you from just running to the boss. If you're finding this guide helpful so far, why not hit the like button? It takes one click. There's one last place to get mods from the helm, and that's the Wayfinder's Compass. You can rank this up by completing seasonal challenges, and as you rank it up, you'll unlock some more elemental well mods. These do rotate weekly, and they can be any of the following. Melee Wellmaker, Seeking Wells, Well of Striking, Bountiful Wells, Well of Ordnance, Elemental Shards, Elemental Time Dilation, Supreme Wellmaker, Well of Restoration, Enduring Wells, or Well of Utility. Some of these are the best elemental well mods, so you'll definitely need to get them, especially Bountiful Wells and really any of the stasis ones. There are two consumable mods that you may not know about. The first one is Sweaty Confetti. This comes from the mod chest in Xur's Treasure Hoard. It provides no real benefit, but it is funny. The other mod is Transcendent Blessing. To get it, you'll need to do Petra's Gateway Between Worlds bounty in the Blind Well, then take the offering to the Oracle, to the Oracle Engine, and it will give you a Purification Ritual. Complete this to get one Transcendent Blessing mod. Keep in mind, it's a one-time use, so once you use it, it's gone. And before anyone asks about Riven's Curse, it's not obtainable in anything other than the Dreaming City armor. All of the Adept weapons are possible to get solo. However, some of the sources will be difficult to do alone. Trials of Osiris does have matchmaking now, so you can go to the lighthouse without a team. And occasionally, there are weeks with freelance trials where everyone is a solo player. Going flawless and opening the flawless chest will give you some of the adept mods. 
These include the PvP mods, like Adept Icarus, and the mods that make sense with Trials weapons, so Adept Impact will only drop from Trials, because Trials is where you get the only Adept Sword. Grandmaster Nightfalls also drop Adept mods for PvE, such as the Adept Big Ones, but there are other ways to get these mods outside of Nightfalls. Master Vault of Glass can drop them after raid encounters, or for solo players, you can run the Master Grasp of Avarice Dungeon. This is only a little bit harder than the normal version, assuming you're at the recommended power level, and it has a chance to drop not only Adept mods, but Masterwork materials, Dungeon weapons, and Artifice armor with an additional mod slot. Ghost mods are also very important, so I might as well go over those. Most of them are unlocked by default, but the highest quality ones like Blinding Light drop alongside Legendaries and Vendors. Lesser Core Harvest, Greater Core Harvest, and Modularity for each playlist activity comes from those activities. Nightmare mods can drop from Nightmare Hunts. As you unlock them, you'll get enhanced, then supreme variants to make them even better. All raid mods can be obtained completely solo, whether you've completed the raid or not. I'll show you in just a minute how you can get all of them as a solo player. Taken Spec, Armaments, Invigoration, Barrier, and Repurposing all drop from Last Wish Chests. Relay Defender will take Moat Collector, Resistant Tether will take Ammo Collector, and all of their enhanced variants drop from the Garden of Salvation Chests. Herd Thinner and the Enhanced Operator, Scanner, and Suppressor Augments all drop from Deepstone Crypt Raid Chests. And all of these Vex mods drop from Chests inside the Vault of Glass. Now, as promised, the video on the right will show you how to get these raid chests as a solo player. The video on the left will show you how to farm over 100 engrams per hour completely solo. Thanks for watching, I'm Marshix, and I'll see you next time.